what Marx does is to prefer to use the famous example of the Duchess of Sutherland, who on the one hand, as he says in the footnote on 892, entertained Mrs. Be Mrs. Beecher Stowe, author of this, authoress of Uncle Tom's Cabin, with great magnificence in London to show her sympathy for the Negro slaves of the American Republic, while expelling all of the crofters from the Highlands in one of the huge Highland clearances which, again, cast people away from their traditional forms of livelihood and led them either to emigrate, as many of them did, or to end up as proletarians in the cities. So the summary of this argument is given at the end of this chapter on 895, where he says, the spoliation of the church's property, the fraudulent alienation of the state domains, the theft of the common lands, the usurpation of feudal and clan property, and its transformation into modern private property under circumstances of ruthless terrorism. All these things were just so many idyllic methods of primitive accumulation. They conquered the field for capitalist agriculture, incorporated the soil into capital. Interesting notion, the commodification of the land, the commodification of the soil, actually makes the soil a medium through which capital starts to circulate and created for the urban industries the necessary supplies of free and rightless proletarians. In chapter 28 what we see is what happens to these people when they get thrown off the land. What happens is they become vagabonds, they become paupers, in some cases they go into becoming highwaymen and robbers and all the rest of it. So what we here find is the power of the state starts to be utilized as a disciplinary apparatus on relationship, in relationship to those people who've been dispossessed of their livelihoods. And the story which Marx tells here is quite simply that state power is used state powers of incarceration, of violent punishment and all the rest of it, uh, become actually standard practices. And in fact, you're saying to all of the people who've been dispossessed, you either become good proletarians or else you're going to suffer from the disciplines of this state apparatus. And along with that, you have uh, legislation over wages, so the wages can't be too high. You have legislation on the minimum length of the working day, which we've encountered earlier, as opposed to the maximum length. And we get a whole series of barbarous laws against combinations of workers, which accuse them of treasonous activity if they try to combine together to improve their lot. So the bloody legislation against the expropriated is a, a pretty awful tale where you cut out people's tongues and you do violent things of this sort just simply to demonstrate to people that they have to join the proletariat or else. 